Pandemic or oh. Good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Today is April the 28th, and I'm coming at you with another segment of Family Law Uncorked. I am Jen Bordeaux with New Direction Family Law, and I am joined today by attorney and a partner at New Direction Family Law, Sarah King. She's been on here before. Thank you for joining me again, Sarah. Thanks for having me, Jen. We both look very uh, spring-like with our corals, and I got my, you know, laid-back jean jacket on today. That's right. We are channeling all of the spring and warm weather that we're experiencing right now, which is phenomenal. At least the pollen has died down some. So. Yeah. Thank you all for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we wanted to hop up here real quick and address something that we have seen um, a, a pattern with sometimes um, with consultations and people calling in that they've experienced this and now they're kind of worse off than where they started. And that is um, do it yourself and online legal services. So they have a time and a place and um, we'll, we'll get a little bit into that, but we more often see the negative effects of some of those online do it yourself legal services. So we wanted to address why that maybe might not be a good situation for everyone um, and some of the pitfall, pitfalls and shortcomings that we've seen with that. So with that, we'll jump right into um, I mean, I think there's different platforms, of course, online, and I don't know all the different names of them. I think one of the big ones is LegalZoom. Um, and again, they can have their pros for sure. But just from your perspective, Sarah, like what kinds of documents have you seen from the family law realm that were kind of DIY or do-it-yourself legal services um, that you were just kind of like, oh man, this, this is not good? <laughs> Well, um, you know, you mentioned that we don't see the good side of it, and you're right. I mean, no one's going to come to me if they do a separation agreement with their spouse and everything's worked out just fine. Why would they go talk to an attorney? So maybe there are those types. But what I see are people who, you know, presented when their, their spouse presented them with a separation agreement they did online and they signed it, didn't even talk to an attorney and it has, you know, waivers in it, you know, no alimony, um, some, you know, he gets the retirement, all these things that they don't understand that, you know, it, this contract is going to be valid. And that's the issue. Sometimes these contracts you fill out online are valid. And that might not be a good thing if you regret what you signed, if you didn't talk to an attorney about your options. On the other hand, some of these contracts they do, they didn't execute properly and it's not valid. So you might have meant for it to be you know, stuck and um, written in stone and a done deal and it turns out you didn't do it right and now it's not. Um, so the, I think the biggest obstacle is when it's a valid separation agreement that you create by filling in a form and, it, and you missed out on a lot of things, you didn't do it correctly, you didn't take care of all of your assets um, and that's when you're really going to regret signing that form and doing it online you're not going to have legal advice. Um, they just give you a template and ask you questions and don't really go into the depths that you would need to if you're talking to an attorney. And I've had to try to renegotiate after people sign them and they're valid. And if the other person says, nope, not going to rene renegotiate, then you're probably stuck with it. Unless if there's something that is you know, illegal that you agree to, which is rarely, or something against public policy, which isn't all most, most likely not the case either. Um, but sometimes both people are unhappy with it. I see a lot of times they agree to kind of share expenses. And while that might sound easy when you first separate, you know, combined everyone's income into one bank account and then everyone pay their stuff out of it, six months or a year later, you're going to be real tired of being tied to their financial situation still. And you have no control over their spending. And you might have questions, you know, why did we do this? And that's I always hate seeing that. It happens a lot that people decide to do that. And then we have a huge mess to unravel after they come to us. So, yeah, and, and taking a step back so that we just have clarity here, what you, you mentioned a valid agreement or a valid contract. So what makes it valid or invalid? Well, it could be a lot of different things, but generally just the execution of it wasn't notarized and, and signed correctly. Um, does it cover everything that it's supposed to cover? And does it have waivers and what do those waivers entail? Um, but just generally that it's executed correctly, signatures gotcha. and, and notarized. I and see I'll, so many separation agreements, people come to me and they're not, they're not notarized or even signed. I'm like, well, this, this isn't valid. Um, yeah. 
Can't afford and I know it. there's been sometimes that agreements have come across your desk for consultations and I've just, you know, hearing you and, and review those that there's, as soon as you see it, you're like, oh, this person is entitled to so much more. These figures aren't correct, you know, just at a quick glance like that. And so sometimes I think people get, can get so caught up in the legalese and not understanding because these legal documents are still going to have the legal jargon and it can be overwhelming and intimidating. I mean, it's a very antiquated language. And if you're not in that field, you don't, those terms can just be very, you know, overwhelming and seem like a foreign language. Um, in some cases they are because it's Latin, but, <laughs> um, and so some people are just like, I don't understand this is overwhelming, whatever. I'm just going to sign it. I just want to be able to move forward. And that's when kind of that rush and not taking a step back and having someone to, to review it can really kind of come back to bite you. Um, right. And then also you think about that dynamic of a relationship. You might have one person that's really controlling and domineering um, and they're pushing it on you. And like you said, you're just going to be done with it. A lot of times we see people, you know, you talk about um, families that have assets and a lot of money and they, you know, they can afford an attorney yet they still don't want to pay an attorney. So they attempt to do it themselves and that's how they get into trouble. A lot of times it's that one person in the relationship that is the controlling type. Maybe they have like their own business or, you know, there's some kind of boss somewhere and they're used to being in charge. Why would they pay an attorney to do it when they could just do it themselves? And that's where things get sticky because there's a lot of assets to deal with. There's a lot of bank accounts to deal with. Uh, you got to watch out for that. Yeah, I mean, it gets so detailed. It's not, people's situations aren't boilerplate. There are common threads or themes maybe throughout, but everyone's situation is specific. Like you just mentioned with the finances, I mean, super specific or with kids and their needs and putting certain language in there to address, you know, those gray areas to make sure that it's very detailed. Um, I think some of these agreements we've seen come across the table have very just, again, just boilerplate blanketed um, provisions that may be about custody situations. And, and I know that, you know, those that are drafted by private attorneys are very, or should be, <laughs> can't speak for all, but I know for ours, are very detailed. And I mean, pinpointing holidays and dates and times and locations for pickups and drop, drop offs and everything, you know, if that's necessary and needed for, for the person's or the party's situation. So um, definitely a, a big um, hurdle there is getting the specific needs of someone's individual situation nailed down and making sure because leaving that gray area unattended to leaves things open to interpretation and people get frustrated that somebody thinks they're respects they're supposed to be doing this and you know there's no language around it so um, definitely can be one of the pitfalls of a templated like separation agreement the other thing too is um, you know I know that some of these online platforms try to do state specific forms and I'm thinking of specifically pleadings that are filed at the courthouse so documents that are filed at the courthouse. And why they might be North Carolina legit documents you also you know the online legal services, they don't know the culture of that local county. And while I think a lot of people maybe don't know or understand that North Carolina yes there is North Carolina state law, you know the laws that surround family law but every county has their own set of local rules and obviously local judges. Um, so how can that play into somebody if they're just printed off this form, plug in some names and they file it with the courthouse, not knowing anything surrounding that culture? Yeah, they're going to get in trouble if they don't do it correctly. Um, and I, I mean, there's plenty of help out there. So if you're thinking about doing your divorce yourself or filing a custody action yourself, reach out to the the county, the courthouse where you are residing and ask them if there's any templates online because a lot of times they do have some simple forms for pro se parties to use. Um, don't get just get it offline unless it's at the actual uh, family court when Wake County have family court website and they have forms on there and um, you know packets to help people file things. But just don't go to like legal Zoom. I don't know if they have the same stuff, but it, there's a lot of help out there. Even for like name changes, there's forms the issue is it's still complicated and you might have questions about those forms and people at the courthouse can't answer your questions. They'll tell you they can't give you legal advice. So then you're kind of stuck again, like, well, what am I doing wrong? There's so many times where I see pro se parties in court and the judge is saying, well, you didn't do this or that and I can't give you legal advice. You're gonna to have to talk to an attorney and they're just like defeated. Like I don't, I'm trying to understand what to do but for some reason I'm not doing it correctly. Can't anyone tell me what to do? Well, they're just 
they just won't and they, they really can't if it has anything to do with legal advice. At that point, you need to talk to an attorney about getting to the next step and making sure everything's done correctly. Yeah, and, and in talking, whenever you do go to file paperwork, there's a fee that's associated with filing certain documents at the courthouse. So, you know, then you run the risk if these if the documents aren't filled out correctly or appropriately for the case. And what if it does, you know, go before the judge or whatever the case may be and it gets dismissed? Well, then you've just wasted, you know, that couple hundred dollars that maybe could have been spent on an initial consultation to find out kind of what to do moving forward. Um, so, definitely looking at that and the specifics of that, not to mention, again, with your culture court, the culture of the local courts, you know, you guys are familiar with the judges and um, there are the elements of the law, of course, which have to be in, you know, go into these documents and everything, but you also know what certain judges are, you learn over time. We've got a whole slew of new judges <laughs> in Wake County, but, you know, you learn over time a little bit of what judges more so are, are looking for, what resonates or how like their patterns of ruling. Now, you have no control over who the judge is for the case, really, for family law, but you do just start to learn their their kind of behavior and patterns. Um, so just another point of being able to work with, with an attorney and at least reviewing documents and, and helping you through that. So the last thing I want to address, um, not to take up too much time today, is we're aware that legal fees can be expensive. And, you know, Family law matters as well as all kinds of different areas of law affect people of all different income, le income levels across the board. So we want to be cognizant, cognizant of that and sensitive to that. Um, so, you know, it, it, sometimes with these documents, if people come, do come to us after the fact, it unfortunately can be twice as expensive than had they come beforehand, um, just because mm -hmm. of, if it is even fixable, you know, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, but let's say someone does go online, maybe fills out, you know, put fills in the blanks online, they print off the documents, you know, can they come for a consultation just to have you at least review those documents and say, hey, no, this is 100% wrong, or, you know, depending upon the person's needs, it might actually be okay. Right, and they, they should have a consultation still at least, and that way we can ask the right questions, and you're not going to get that from an online form, making sure they're not losing out on something the other person might have, um, and, you know, we're talking about assets here and bank accounts, retirement accounts, if there's none of that present, if there's no um, assets or debts tied together, then you might not have an issue and you can do something quite simple. Even in cases where there's just a few and an attorney drafts it, you know, it's still going to be pretty simple, but at least you have something concrete. People run into, you know, they um, get a divorce and they don't take care of the things correctly and all of a sudden they can't get their spouse's name off their mortgage. So if they're trying to go get a second mortgage, say you're the one that moves out and your name's still on the marital residence and there's no way for you to make that really happen without taking some kind of legal action. Um, so you just don't want to get yourself stuck in financial situations. And we're able to discuss that with them and make sure that there's nothing like that holding them back or they miss something to include in the separation agreement. And really just have a conversation about what's important and you obviously don't want to forego things you know that's another thing it might be cheaper to do it online but by doing it you miss out on half of your spouse's retirement which was going to be you know eighty thousand dollars so that wasn't a smart financial decision to do it on your own and not talk to an attorney so it's good to at least have that conversation yeah absolutely and again in looking at you know child support i mean there's obviously the north carolina uh, guidelines child support guidelines but they're just looking at those those forms. I mean, I work in family law firm, but still I look at those and I'm like, wait, how many overnights? How is that, you know, counted? Or, you know, the the health insurance expenses, you know, child care expenses, extracurricular expenses, all that kind of stuff plays into that. And, um, you know, just having that guidance and that advice of how that works and what you can and can't put in there, how everything works. Because I, I think sometimes people think, well, yeah, okay, we've been married, we're getting divorced. Well, we'll just get divorced and then everything will be fine. But you know, those are those are two lives that have been you know intertwined for you know potentially years and so it's not easy to just untangle all of that there's a lot that goes into that so um definitely get the appeal you know we, we are such a culture of immediacy so being able to go online fill out these forms plug in some information and think all is good and you immediately get it and you can move forward you can definitely see the attraction in that and like you said for some situations that are very simple and straightforward it may be um, maybe okay, but bare minimum having a consultation with an attorney to no matter what the legal issue, issue is, but obviously we're focusing on family law 
um, is paramount and making sure that you're not losing rights to anything before moving forward with the divorce, knowing what you're entitled to or what you may be on the hook for as far as spousal support and stuff like that. So all good things to consider. Obviously, everyone has to do what is best for their situation. But like I said, bare minimum, having a consultation um, could save you a lot of, of headache and heartache and dollars <laughs> mm -hmm. down the road. So anything else you'd like to add, Sarah, about the online DIY, you know, legal services, things to be aware of? Just be careful. You can get yourself into a lot of trouble. And like you mentioned before, it can be more expensive trying to get out of that. So be careful what you agree to. If your spouse is that controlling type, then just create some space, talk to an attorney and get some um, support there. I know it can be hard to stand up to people once you've been in a relationship and be down so, um, so much and for so long. So we provide excellent support and reach out to your family and friends, provide that extra support too, and we'll get you through this. Absolutely. Well said. Divorce, there, there's a lot in it when it comes to emotions and the emotional and mental side. It's not just the legal side. So taking all that in consideration when making decisions and signing, you know, paperwork as well. So as always, guys, if you are interested in a consultation, have questions about maybe some DIY forms you filled out online um, before signing, please have an attorney review them. You can always reach out to us. Um, here on Facebook or on our Instagram page or our web page or go very old school and give us a call directly at the office at 919-719-3470. So Sarah, as always, such a pleasure. Thank you for lending your advice and wisdom for us today. And we'll see you at the next time we walk in court, guys. Have a good day. Bye.